It's time to wake your grind up so we can shine up until our time's up. <laughs> yeah. uh, I can't approve that I can't lose. How should I kill them? Left for the right man, I can't choose. I am unstoppable, had to prove that it's possible. If you wanna try me, step up and I'm crossing you. Alleyway, yeah, trophy at the trophy. Now they call me Kobe. Veins full of purple. Can't nobody hold me. Hey. Put that work in every day, shooting shots till my arm hurt. See the fade away, thank God every day. He's with me when I play, went from YMCA to Team USA. So I am here to stay, do it for my state. For this my whole do it for that Northwest, I'm feeling like I'm yay. You do it for the grand, I do it to be great. I do it for the dub like IT and Nate. A born winner, never settle for almost. Put me in the gang, coach, yeah, that's all, folks. Veins of purple, my veins of purple, go and get it, don't let them hurt you Veins of purple, veins of purple, take some patience, but it's a virtue Veins of purple, veins of purple, go and get it, don't let them hurt you Veins of purple, veins of purple, take some patience, but it's a virtue just don't worry about it, just keep playing. And it just seemed like time stood still for that moment. So it really hit hard for me. Man, my man Coach Drew. Ah, that was, yeah, that was the coach. Man, when you have the when you have the, the little braids, oh, third grade year, yeah. <laughs> when I first met him, <laughs> that's so funny, man. man was... It's crazy. He's been coaching us. He was coaching us from like third to eighth grade. Yeah. <sighs> that was really. You always had a towel. Yeah. Oh, zero. zero. He said that's a, that shot the hero zero. <laughs> Oh yeah, I forgot the handshakes. I know, everybody's doing like this. We started our seventh grade year, I gave all the kids their own handshake. His handshake, we finished with. It was like, it was that and something else. Baddest in the nation. That was his goal. His goal was to be the baddest in the nation. And before you know it, he was trying out for the USA team, which he made. Man, that was a while ago. That was family. And that just represented all the hard work he had put in and how he had strived to be the best in the nation. Yeah, we was really a family. Yeah, that man Coach Dro, he was, I feel like he really developed my game, honestly. Make the game easier. Because now you know you don't have a lot of energy, so make the game easier as possible. You know, we did have Jordan. We were nasty. You know, remember how we used to go at the ref? But Mr. Ref! But, but Mr. Ref! Miss Ref! So Miss Ref, what did he do? What did he do? Yeah! We're the link up, the link up timeouts. Win or lose, we will lock up. Yeah. When we take the L's. <laughs> to show that no matter what the situation, no matter what was going on. I just remember the losses, bro. Those were vicious. We were gonna stay together as a family. You know? uh, he would call it, he would call a timeout. First off, we would, it could be like a 10 point loss. With three seconds to go, he would call a timeout. Tell everybody to link up and then literally talk to us. Like give us a motivational speech. Like you guys played your hearts out, da, 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 all that. And that's one thing people don't understand that makes us a difference about the Rotary is family. Been coaching me for so long, since we were kids. It's just crazy when you think about how long that was. I mean, he's been coaching, coaching us since we were children. They, He's been a very, very great coach. I wouldn't, would never want to play with anybody else. Oh man, please don't do that. You're see the carry right nothing. <laughs> I mean, that's what you want to see. You get to see the, the win. Uh, the three days after the haircut. 
when this start growing, you can just see all that. It's still fine though. She likes, she likes to talk a big game, but when it gets down to the get down, I'm the man. But to her, I'm just little, Jalen. But you are, you are my baby brother. <laughs> and then I remember when y'all came to Memphis. Yeah, for nationals. Yeah. Seventh grade year. Yeah. Yeah, that was how long ago? That was. Yeah, how old was I? I was like eleven, I think. Mm -hmm. I was probably ten, because I was always the great. I was always a year younger than everybody. So it was, a, it was a while ago. But yeah, she came to see me play. She came to see me hoop. <laughs> I'll kill him. I still have y'all shirts to this day. <laughs> the little that I remember from it, because you know it was a while ago. I played in so many other tournaments besides that. But I just remember being the greatest, one of the greatest experiences of my life at that time. Being able to play nationally in front of all the coaches that were there. And I feel like that was one of the things that that made me who I am today. Because um, before that, I always played like out of state, but I never really went down like to the south. And I was when I realized that you know there are people that are stronger than you, taller than you, but you always so you always got to work no matter what. And even when you're even when you're better than everybody skill wise, you still need to work no matter what. So I feel like that was one of the things that. That made me who I am today. It made me one of those one of those guys that that's always gonna work and always wants to get better at his at his craft. Yeah. They were up, I was shocked. I was, I was I was playing some grown some grown ass men when I was ten years old. <laughs> yeah, and I knew that. There was a dude I'll never forget. I think it was the New York team. There was a dude with a tattoo on his arm. Uh, I must look at that and got so intimidated. I was like, oh yeah. I was like, oh yeah. Oh yeah. This dude, this dude has to be 20 years old. And he was buff too. He was buff and had a. I was like, nah. There ain't no way. And for everybody that knows me, they know that me and Grapes have a special relationship. You should have told like, me I would have bought more. Hey, <laughs> I can kill a whole thing of Grapes in one day. It'll be okay. These might be gone, honestly. Oh, well, we see, we one in the same. We great eaters all day. Put some grapes in front of me, and it's over. It. It's over. <laughs> Keep killing them. Yeah, they're gone. I know y'all need one, so you looking at it too. What is you looking at it too? Thank you. My mom, she was nice. She was a sinner. And she said, she said the reason why I have the post moves that I have is because of her. <laughs> it's because of her. Because of her. The fadeaway jump or the post? What are we talking hey, hey, both. Hey, she was, every time, she's be like, you know that thing you do when you turn around and she. <laughs> oh, that's her. <laughs> she'd be like, yeah, that's all, that's all me. I'm like, all right, okay, mom. If that's how you feel. And my dad used to be like, yeah, it, it, was, it was her. So I just. You know what he co-signed? Yeah. This will be on her side. This, yeah. You don't want to be on her man's side. <laughs> <laughs> These right here are the Prom 2K 17s. These are these are special right here. You know, I have, I have fun at prom uh, just to go out, you know, be all dressed up. I don't really get dressed up like that. Uh, a lot of people were surprised about what I wore. It was. It was pretty swaggy. Um, had fun, had the best date in the world. Everybody who knows me definitely should know what these are. Everybody should know what these are. These are the ones. The state champion, 2015 state championship, Jalen Noel ones. Everybody remembers these shoes. Uh, I was in the state championship game. You know, we weren't supposed to win that year. We came out. And then we got them. But yeah, these these will always be in my possession because these have so many memories that come with them. These are the Jordan Wells. 
the 2015 State Championship Edition. General number ones. If you don't got a pair, cop a pair. Well, I'll put here or something. Same, gotta keep another pair. I had to do that. Hmm. You gotta show them those ones. Those ones are filthy. I gotta show them these ones? Yeah. All right. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't think you guys were ready for this. These are the real, the gentleman ones. Not the championship edition. These are the Rory style edition. Yeah, this is this is some crazy stuff. What size are these anyway? I think this was like 11. Size 11. This was when I was wearing size 11. So this was a long time ago. Yeah, but you see the you see the black and baby blue with a little bit of white right here. Uh, and let me show you something right here though. The J number one. Hey, they don't, they don't know about that one. These are the ones. Um, yeah, had a had a great career in these. Playing with rotary, the black and baby blue. The gentlemen will twos are gonna come are coming soon. They should be in stores in about two years. If you don't got these, you definitely need a cop a pair. J No Wells, very old. Hopefully they have more for you because these are definitely sold out. So this is my room right here, closer to my mom's room. Uh, I can see, as you can see, we got a lot of trophies, but uh, I have to say probably my top three favorites out of all these trophies is my first one, seventh grade nationals, we took second place. Out of the 20 to 30 teams that were there, probably say my second is Anaheim. I got MVP. It was a fun experience. Then I have to say my third favorite is the Stars Classic, which we won this year, eighth grade, 2017. This just really stands out with the cold basketball, and it's just so clean. It's just one of my favorites. And this was the last tournament right here. This was actually the last tournament that my dad went to with me, the GCBA in Las Vegas, where I won the Dell Contest, eight foot rim, uh, fifth grade. Um, this was eighth grade pictures uh, at Seattle Rotary, which I always do every year. So we took a picture and we got a cool background feature to it. And I like the jerseys this year, I think they're pretty good. Uh, then over here, I got the baby pictures. <laughs> uh, I think I was probably, what, I think one or two or something. Probably, I'll probably say one. Got three of them. Uh, then we got the jersey. Uh, Pops, 44 Noel. Uh, this is a Seattle U jersey, but we turned around the other way to see our last name. And then I got some baby pictures with my dad. Uh, there was one at Wild Waves, and then there's one with my sister, my brother, and him, and there's one with the whole family. And then I have the PE award, which is, I win that all the time, and I got a uh, first honors. So, yeah. Uh, the honors is for, because I know my mom wants me to keep a good GPA, so I did, I did that for her, and I got the rosary, got the cross rosary. Um, my prayers every night so can't go wrong with prayer so and I got the uh, most improved award academically because uh, my sixth grade year was pretty crazy uh, and I turned it around because I know my dad wanted me to and then I got the reading award uh, first trimester 2016 oh uh, well, these are the, these are, the, yeah, these are the basketball shoes, right here. This definitely one of my favorite shoes, customized Kyrie's, fourteen. One size below me. This <laughs> is one size below me. He still be taking my shoes, but it's good. It's all good. You be taking my shoes too. I got a little closet. Since I'm the little one, I get the little closet. <laughs> Uh, these are the shoes. These are the Jordans. I'm trying to be like Jalen, a little bit with the spice. Got the jackets, nice clothes. 
uh, jeans. Just trying to hey, he loves them upgrade ripped. my flavor. He loves them ripped jeans. Just trying to upgrade my flavor. Yeah. Hey, look at the trying to work with it. Right you know. Look at the feet getting kind of full, huh? Yeah. They move in the barn a little bit. I know. Wait till you move out. Yeah. I'm still going to keep some of my stuff in there. Hey, can I get some space? It's mine now. Can I get some space? These are the ones. Nobody knows about these. I'll mess with those. Everybody know about these. You don't mess with these? I'll mess with those. So, in the beginning, uh, met Coach Mike uh, back in the day at the Seattle Pro-Am. The way that we started off was uh, we're playing against each other, pretty intense game. And uh, Coach Mike was, uh, was not the nicest guy on the court. And uh, he came up, matter of fact, uh, it was against Coach Trav the Cure. He's now the head coach at the uh, University of Montana. And I was guarding Coach Trav, coming up the court, full court, trying to play a little D. Coach Mike came up, he set a screen on me, he set a screen on me so tough uh, that he knocked the wind out of me. <laughs> and uh, I was laying on the ground on the gym floor and I looked up and I saw Coach Mike and he looked at me and just kind of almost snarled at me and just walk, kept walking on and uh, kept playing. But uh, after the game, asked if I was all right. It was after the game, he didn't stop the game. But it was after the game, asked if I was all right. And uh, really from that day on, we were, we were real cool. And uh, you know, he was just that kind of guy. He was a hot competitor on the court, but off the court, really he was a, he was a, a gentle giant. Me and Mike was pretty close too. Like I said, Mike sat on my bench from fourth through sixth grade, then he took the JV job at Garfield. So that led me to get a different assistant coach named Tracy Osley. And then he helped us push these boys all the way to high school. And, uh, you know, just developed, he was a great family man. You know, he obviously had his two sons, his daughter, Laney, his wife. And um, I was able to coach and he was coaching and I was assistant coach down at Rainier Beach and then was fortunate enough to get this job at Garfield. I believe Mike was coaching at Garfield for a few years, at least three years before Jalen um, was a freshman. And uh, so when we decided for Jalen to go to Garfield, he was so excited because then his son was going to be there with him, you know, and he, um, did he ever talk to you about that? Yeah, he talked to me about the, you know, he was coaching, it's, assistant coach at Garfield, and then Jalen was going to be <laughs> playing there, and, you know, and that, so he was, he was so he was, excited. He was so excited. Yeah, he was always, when I would call him up and I said, oh, where are you doing today? Oh, we just getting back from Portland. Are we on our way to Portland, Mom? And I'll talk to you when I come back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know that Jalen didn't play as much as he thought he was, we all thought he was going to, just because he, Mike would say, um, uh, what was that thing he would say? He told Ed, um, oh, he's not playing. He's not playing defense. Uh, put him on the bench. Put him on that bench. He <laughs> was harder on his kids than the other kids. Because if they didn't play right, he would say, sit down. Mm -hmm. And I was here for a year. And uh, I saw him, we were at a tournament at Rainier Beach, a summer, summer league tournament at Rainier Beach. And I saw him outside and, you know, I asked him what he was doing. He was just kind of like, you know, you know, I'm open, and I was like, man, what you think about coming on and helping me out, you know, at, at Garfield? And he asked me if I was serious, and I was like, absolutely, from day one. You know, it took him maybe a minute, he went home, I know he went home and talked to Laney, and and immediately he was, he was on board um, to come be a part of the staff here at Garfield. So when we decided for Jalen to go to Garfield, he was so excited because then his son was gonna be there with him, you know, and you know, the boys were young. Jalen was young, you know, at that time. I remember Jalen coming to practice, you know, a lot of days. And Jalen would come into practice after having games or having, you know, definitely after school. And he would do homework sometimes on the side. Or, you know, Mike would come in and be like, easy. You know, Jalen just dropped 30. Or Jalen just dropped 35 or 25 or, you know, 40 this game or whatever. And this was, you know, when Jalen was, you know, fourth, fifth grade, you know. And so it was really crazy that this kid was as young and he just had a knack to score. You know, it was really cool. And he was so proud, you know, of, of Jay. And uh, three or four years um, before Jalen had come to Garfield, 
uh, Mike was with me. Um, and it was, it was an honor for him to say that he wanted his son to come play for me. It was a true honor. My freshman year, when I was coming in, I was going to be ready. Uh, playing in the summer league from eighth grade going to my freshman year, I, I was starting on that team, and that was supposed to be the team um, that we were playing with. So I was pretty happy. I was like, well, I get to come in as a freshman. I get to be the man, uh, all that. But then we got uh, some transfers. Shine quickly faded away. Cause I remember, oh, good, cause I remember coming in like playing the summer league south uh, freshman year. Yeah, I was like, we good, we good. I used to eat so we good. go, we gonna be cool. 
I was like, we don't get a lot of more head time though. But, you know, it is what it is, it's life. Yeah. But then when they came in, I was, I was like, oh yeah, it's time to, it's time to get this win. And especially that too, I was like, yeah, it's time to learn from these dudes. Cause they, cause they were doing it before us. They had great success in their, their other schools before. I'm 6'3", and I go to Garfield High School. Okay, how would you describe your game and what type of player you think you play like? Man, my game is, I play a lot like Carmelo, because of my pull-up game, you know? Exactly. Alley knows, Alley Wack knows, the one dribble yeah, pull-up. Easy, uh, easy. Okay, so Fade away like Kobe. My strong suit is offense. Yeah, I'm trying to get better on defense, that's what all my coaches are talking about. And they're telling me that, but a lot of college coaches are looking for not just offense but defense as well. And my goal in high school is to win about three more rings, three more championships. I mean, last year we won. It was a great year, great experience. Now I'm ready to come back, finally try to be beat. Now I'm ready. Who is your biggest influence or mentor in your life? It has to be my dad. I mean, he's just been there for me my whole life, and I can't think of enough of that. It's just been coaching me since third grade, and been teaching me a lot, and helped mold me into the player I am today. And then my sophomore year, I got to do everything that I wanted to do my freshman year. <laughs> I was a starter. There's nothing else to say, man. I just had to, I, I quickly became that freshman, that little freshman. I had to become one of the leaders. It was just it was just a crazy and big jump, but I felt like I was ready and that I was gonna be able to be a leader on that team. What was amazing about his sophomore year was that Jalen didn't just show his his dominance and prowess on the court, but he showed his mental toughness off the court. I just I just was on a whole other level. Things arose again with his father and cancer. And what he did was he stayed the course and he stayed focused on what the task was at hand. That year, I was just on a whole nother level. There was the fire that was inside of me, that's inside of me, burned. It, was, it, it burned more than it ever had before. Which was amazing to me. I don't know if I could have done that at his age. And um, it was really a testament to actually how Lanny and Mike had, had raised him up until that point. He was going through the season, man, and literally there wasn't a game. You could you could literally put in 20 points in a book for Jalen, like, with no problem. Especially because we were supposed to be weak. Yeah, nobody, everybody got beef with him, right? We are supposed to be terrible. Like, you could literally put that in there. But then there was games where he was going, you know, 30, 35, you know what I mean? There was a 40-point game, a couple 40-point games in there. And he was doing it almost easy. You know, like he, you would think that, like there was times where it's like, okay, well, Jalen had an off night where you might have thought he had 15, but then you look in the book and he had 25. You know what I mean? And it was literally that easy for him. And this is going up against future NBA stars and guys like, you know, like I said, like Dejounte Murray and other guys that, you know, are just, you know, high Division One level players. And he's a sophomore.
And the other thing that he showed that year was that he wanted to win. So not only did we uh, did he score, he was we went down to the Las Vegas Prep Championship that year. And we had went down the previous year and we won it and they asked us to come back. So we went back down there, but with considerably less talent. I had the coach who actually ran the tournament said to me, he said, Coach, he said, you have less talent but this team is so much more hungry to win and the chemistry on this team is so much better. This team is by far better than the previous year's team. You know, and we, we did win the tournament by a considerably amount more, more than we did that previous year. So, um, and I'll let those two teams argue uh, which team was better. <laughs> but uh, he was a winner and he's a winner, you know what I mean? And that's the thing that I think that impressed me the most. It wasn't just about scoring. He scored to win. He made winning plays. It worked out very well. Had a great team, had a great season. That team, I can honestly say, was one of the most fun teams to play on. We all really liked each other. There wasn't a time where you wouldn't see us together. Everywhere, we'd just be together all the time. There was no, there was no one person that was gonna be walking around. It was the Garfield Bulldogs, always. We literally, just ran through, we went undefeated regular season um, in the Metro. Um, I think one of the big game, one of the biggest games that, that we could remember that year was we played Rainer Beach in our MLK um, Classic here, uh, Union Hoop Showcase. And that was really the test for us. That was really the test. And because, like I said, we had up until that point, um, we had played some teams, we had went down to Vegas and done some things. But obviously, Rainer Beach being the, at that point the, the, the actually back to back to back state champions of the 3A, they were going that year, they were going for a four peat, an unprecedented four peat. They were the litmus test. I just didn't let anything stop me. I didn't care who it was, I didn't care what it was. Nothing was gonna stop me from getting what I wanted to do, doing what I wanted to do, getting anything that I wanted to get done. I was gonna do it and I was not gonna care what was going on, I didn't care what anybody said, I didn't care, I didn't care about anything. I just wanted to succeed and that fire that burns inside of me is always gonna be there. And the showcase host, Garfield Bulldog. At first, the starting lineup for the visiting Vikings. At four, six five junior, wearing number 15, Vincenzo Ryder. At center, six five junior, number 32, Brandon Long.